Now, when you think about Father's Day, you think about what makes a good father. If I would have done a poll when you come in, I would have heard things like, you know what, they need to, they need to really have a great relationship with their children. They need to be personal. They need to know their children well. They need to, if they have two or three or eight, you need to know each one as individual. You need to understand what they like and, and what they don't like. Understand the best way to discipline and the, and, and the ways that don't work. You need to know your children. You need to provide for them. If you know them, then you know them well enough that you need to provide. You need, as a father, you need to provide what they need over what they want. Because sometimes children get those two confused. Sometimes adult children get those confused, right? And you think about just being present, being present for sporting events or dance recitals or whatever's going on, being present in the times of celebration and the storms, in those difficult times, being present as a father makes you a good dad. And then really providing that protection. You can't provide protection and safety and security unless you're present. That protection, that direction, that guidance, a good dad leads. Leads not only by the coaching and the encouragement, but by example. Do as I say and not as I do is terrible parenting. You need to follow my lead. Paul says it, follow me as I follow Christ. A good dad leads by example. A good dad is there to shepherd his children. What a great way to really encourage our dads and to, to not only celebrate the ones that have gotten it right, but to motivate all of us that are still a work in progress. To motivate all of us to grow in our relationship with the Lord as sheep, but then as shepherds, dad, as shepherds of our families, how we can do it the biblical way, the most effective way, the way that would not only honor our heavenly father, but also lead our families in the best way possible. We are looking at Psalm 23, maybe the most famous Psalm, maybe the most famous chapter in the Bible, but we're not simply looking at it through the eyes of a memorial service or a funeral, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We're looking at it in how we can apply it, every line of that six verse Psalm and apply it to our lives so that we can understand the shepherd better and we can be more obedient sheep. So I wanna review here as we are on the last verse and we're gonna look at some things this morning. First of all, verse one says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Really what we looked at is the fact that the shepherd is personal. If you look at it, the Lord is my shepherd. We said this is maybe the most important word in the six verse psalm. The word my, because the Lord is a shepherd, without a doubt. He is the good shepherd. But everything that follows, all of the attributes of the shepherd, all of the benefits of the sheep, do not apply unless he is your personal shepherd. God is a personal God. He doesn't desire to have a religion and rules. He desires to have a relationship, a personal relationship. He wants you to understand and know and recognize his voice and he wants to know you like no one else in this world. He is a personal shepherd. He is a personal God. It says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Second part of verse one right there says that the shepherd provides. Does this sound familiar? Exactly what we were talking about with our dads, with our fathers personal, knows his sheep, provides for their wants and their needs. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. This right here, we talked a couple weeks ago, maybe the most crazy statement right there. I fear no evil because really the difference is for you are with me. What is the shepherd? The shepherd is present in the valleys, in the mountaintops, the shepherd is present. How can we say that I fear no evil? Because your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They, the rod and staff provide that protection, they protect. 
and they direct. That is the shepherd. He is personal, he provides, he is present, he protects and he directs. He is there for us. And we get down to the last two verses of this psalm and it really provides us with, with the exclamation point to this relationship between the shepherd who loves and provides and directs and disciplines and the sheep who it is simply our job to follow and obey, to stay near the shepherd. And so we look at verse five right there. Verse five says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. And then the exclamation point. Surely goodness and loving kindness. This word loving kindness right here is really mercy. Two interchangeable words. The goodness and the loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the shepherd pursues. The shepherd pursues. He provides, he is present, he protects, he pursues. That surely, the first word I want you to look at right there is, is, is so important because a lot of times we think, we think, well, maybe. No, it is surely. What does that mean? It means that 100% guaranteed for the sheep that are part of God's flock, that surely, certainly, guaranteed goodness and mercy, goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. You don't have to wake up and wonder if I'm following the shepherd, is goodness right behind me, is mercy there for me, is forgiveness and loving kindness there to follow me wherever I go? Yes, surely, certainly, those two things are there. Now, when you look at this last verse, there are two ways to approach that following us all the days of our lives. And then there's one great promise, one great exclamation point to this relationship between the great shepherd and his sheep, okay? The first is a pursuit. Who doesn't love a great pursuit? In fact, most great movies will have a chase scene or a pursuit Maybe it's running through the streets of New York, jumping over buildings, knocking down trash cans. Have you seen that movie? That's like every action movie, okay? They run through. One time I would just love to try it, you know? Get one of my boys and say, I'm gonna give you a, a 20 yard head start. I'm getting older, so maybe just a 10 yard head start. And I just wanna start chasing them through the streets, knocking down things, pushing people over, and see if anybody doesn't just shoot us, okay? I think that's what happened. In, in Texas, that's what would happen, all right? But there's always, maybe it's a chase scene through the streets of San Francisco where they're wrecking car after car and of course there's always a trolley chain, train going down and it's gonna get hit and knocked off. It just happens. Maybe the pursuit isn't an action chase scene. Maybe it's a pursuit of a lifelong love. And we love to see that pursuit of a guy chasing after a girl or vice versa and you see this pursuit and at the end, he or she catches the other one and it's, it's an awe moment. And, and guys, if you're watching that movie, not today on Father's Day, but if you're watching that movie on another day, you're scoring points, okay? But maybe there's a perfect movie where they have a chase scene and a love pursuit, all right? And they two combine. We love pursuit. And this is the pursuit of maybe two sheep dogs of mercy and goodness, and just picture this because a lot of commentators will look at this and they'll say, this is the shepherd out front with his rod and his staff, his direction and his protection, leading the sheep. Remember we covered a few weeks ago that, that in the Middle East and the Eastern sheep method, they, they lead the sheep. They call to them and walk and the sheep just follow. See, in the Western world, we drive animals. That's how we herd, we drive them. That's not the picture that, that David was, was painting for each one of us. The picture is the shepherd is out front. He whistles, he calls, and the sheep just follow. And the mercy and the goodness are like the two sheepdogs that follow, that help corral, that help push, that if a sheep gets straight off just a little bit, there's the goodness of God. And if the sheep turn around, there's security behind them knowing that God's goodness and the way that he provides our needs and our wants, his mercy, the way that we stray and we get a little nudge back into the fold. The, the way that when we fail and fall, that the forgiveness of God follows right behind his flock. 
that this goodness and this mercy, this goodness and loving kindness are like two sheepdogs following us, guiding us, giving us the protection and the, the security of having the shepherd in front of us and his goodness and his loving kindness and his forgiveness and his mercy that surround his flock. And we can know that surely, certainly, guaranteed today, God's loving kindness, God's forgiveness, God's mercy, God's goodness surrounds you if you stay following the shepherd. If you walk wherever he leads, whether it's green pastures, quiet waters, or through the valley, God's goodness, his mercy, his loving kindness is close behind wherever we are. That is a, a comforting promise. That is an amazing fact that God's forgiveness and his mercy and his love always is close behind you as sheepdogs. That's that pursuit. That's God always pursuing you. That's God always loving you. That's God always forgiving you. And the great news is his forgiveness is never too far off. His forgiveness is promised to his sheep. And when you have a relationship with Jesus and you know the heavenly father, not simply as a God that created the world and set everything into motion, but you know God as your Abba father and you're a part of his family, then you are promised the forgiveness and the mercy of God. All of your sins, all of your mess ups, past, present, and future, forgiven. That surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. That's the pursuit. The second way of looking at this isn't a pursuit, but, but it's really a product of you walking through the fields, the valleys, the streams with the shepherd. And this product is like the wake of a boat. If you've ever done any type of water sports, you realize that when the boat goes through the water, even if it's rough water, let's say you're on Lake Conroe and it's a, a holiday weekend, so it's packed and there's white caps out in the middle of it, you know that if you're tubing or you're skiing or, you're, or wakeboarding, whatever you're doing, that the smoothest spot on the lake will be right behind that boat in the wake of the boat. When you say surely goodness and mercy, goodness and loving kindness will follow you all the days of your life, it is also a product of sheep who follow and obey the shepherd. That when we walk with the Lord, then we should leave behind us a smooth wake of goodness and mercy. This is a challenge for Christ followers. We should act differently, look differently, respond differently. We should leave things different than the world leaves them. Our wake, our product of us being part of a group, part of a, a team, part of a team at work or at school, part of a, a neighborhood, should be that you leave goodness and mercy wherever you leave. There's a, a book, it's by Keller, but not Tim Keller, the pastor from New York who's written several books and done an amazing job just having a, a church in New York City. He just recently passed. This is Philip Keller. And this has been an amazing book for our study of Psalm 23. It's called A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. And the reason that he is qualified to write this book is for nine years as a 20-year-old in through his 20s, Philip Keller was a North African shepherd. He was a sheep herder, a sheep rancher. And in North Africa, even to current days, it would have been very similar to the way that David herded sheep 3,000 years ago. And the way that Jesus would have referred to as the good shepherd and the sheep knowing his voice. This man understands like we never would have an understanding of what it means to be a sheep herder, a shepherd. And for nine years, that was his life. He understood that, he grew in that, he, he, he studied that it was who he was. Later on in life, God called him into the ministry. And he led his church through an understanding of Psalm 23 like no one would be able to understand. So he wrote the book so that you and I, 
could have an understanding. I highly recommend this book. It's an easy read. I read so much of it right when I got it that I needed to slow down and only read the chapters that really apply to next week's lesson because I would have forgotten all the gold that is in this book. But he talks about the wake. He talks about what sheep can do. He talks about the benefits of sheep. And this is what he says, and I'm, I'm gonna quote, I'm just reading it from it. It says, it's worth reiterating at this point that sheep can, under mismanagement, bad shepherd, not obedient, can be the most destructive livestock. In short order, they can ruin and ravage land almost beyond remedy. But in bold contrast, they on the other hand can be the most beneficial of all livestock if properly managed. What he says is sheep can be the most destructive or the most constructive of all livestock. He gives some reasons. He says their manure is the most well-balanced of all livestock and has the most nutritional benefits. They can be trained to eat weeds that can be invasive and they can actually leave a field better than they found it. That's what he says. In my own experience, a sheep rancher, I have in just a few years seen two Derelict ranches, ranches restored to high productivity and usefulness. More than that, what appeared as a depressing eyesore became beautiful, park-like properties of immense worth. That is the benefit of well-managed, obedient sheep. We have the greatest shepherd. If we will be obedient to follow him, if we will be obedient to allow the fruit of the spirit to live through us, for us to produce the peace, the patience, the kindness, the love, the gentleness, the, 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 all of the things that God can produce in us. And we follow him and we do as he tells us to do and we obey the shepherd. We can leave our families, we can leave our businesses, we can leave our schools, we can leave our teams, we can leave a restaurant better off than when we found it. If we live for the Lord, if we follow the shepherd and we obey him properly managed, then we as Christ followers can restore fields that look like an eyesore and make them look like beautiful park properties. That's what we need to do. Dads, on Father's Day, how much more do we need to lead our family so that we leave it better than we found it? That's a principle that my dad taught me years ago. You leave a place better than you found it. That's why when we're cleaning up for beach retreat, we try to leave it better than we found it. That's why when I go to the gym in the mornings, they think I'm crazy, but I'm picking up weights and I'm putting them back in. Apparently, people at night can't see the 25, and the 25 is supposed to go on top of the 25. Maybe they just, just haven't figured that out yet. But it's just, it's just in me. Like, why don't I leave it better than I found it? That is our calling on this earth. That is, as Christ followers, what we are called to do as sheep. We are called to leave it better than we found it, to shine brightly and make a difference in your circle of influence. We are, we are called to leave a wake that is smoother and more beautiful so that people can see Christ in us, so that people can see what an amazing shepherd we follow, what an amazing shepherd that loves us and wants us to live for him. There is a pursuit of God's mercy and his goodness. But there's a product in us that as we receive the mercy, the forgiveness, the loving kindness, all of those things from God, that we, in return, offer those to those around us. The forgiveness and the mercy and the loving kindness and the goodness of God should flow out of us because we have been blessed so much by our shepherd to, for him to lead us and to extend us forgiveness that we don't deserve, goodness that we are blessed beyond measure, loving kindness that is inexplainable. And what do we need to do as sheep? We need to love this world with that same loving kindness. We need to extend the forgiveness and the mercy that God has extended to us we need to express the goodness and share the goodness with everyone around us. Why? 
Because we need to produce a wake in our path. We need to look behind us at wherever we've been and say, did I leave it better than I found it? Did I live a life in such a way that pointed people to the shepherd that brings hope and peace and life? We need to produce the goodness. Do they follow us everywhere we go? The kindness, does it follow us? That mercy, is it right behind us or is it nowhere to be found in our wake? That is the product that we should be living out. And then the final thing right here with this part of the verse is really the persistence. It says right here that these things will follow me all. All, by the way, there in Hebrew means all, every one of them. All the days of my life on earth, the beauty of God's forgiveness is its past, present, and future. The beauty of his goodness, the beauty of his mercy is he never takes a day off. His love for you, his forgiveness for you, it's not that, you know what, if Tuesday you blow it big time, God's not taking the day off. His mercy, his loving kindness, his forgiveness, his goodness is right there following you to sweep up the mess, to offer to you the forgiveness that only our heavenly father can, can provide. No days off. Just ask a shepherd. Ask a sheep herder. We have a, a small sample of that because my youngest was in FFA. And when you have an animal, whether it's a goat or a steer or a lamb, there's no days off. I can remember those days. Christmas morning. There was a lot to do, family and celebration and presents, but you know what? Those animals still needed to be fed. There wasn't a day off even on Christmas. You had to, you had to provide, you had to feed, you had to love, you had to care for. Our Heavenly Father never takes a day off. And we as sheep can never take a day off from following Him, pursuing Him, loving Him, obeying Him. No days off. This journey is not a Sunday journey. This journey is at every day, all the days of my life. He's gonna lead, he's gonna follow me with his loving kindness, with his mercy, with his goodness. But every day I must be obedient. Every day I must follow him. Every day I must see the shepherd for who he is and how much he loves me. And I must leave in my wake the love, the kindness, the mercy that God has shown me. Every day as a Christ follower, I must shine brightly in this dark world. Every day, I need to live out the love and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. There are no days off. It's amazing. Last week, we were flying out, uh, going to Beach Retreat. The buses left. I told them I was taking a faster vehicle than them. It was an airplane. And we, we rushed to the airport because it was a quick flight. We have to beat the buses there because we help unload the luggage once they get there. And so I'm sitting there um, enjoying a, a lunch, very quick lunch, expensive airport, airport lunch. And sure enough, one of our church members is like, hey, Stephen, how's it going? And the guy that I was eating with said, you're never off, are you? Even in the airport, even in a random place, you're never off. You know what? We're never off as Christians. We're never off as sheep. We're always living and loving and being that example. Fathers, on Father's Day, we never get a day off. We joked about today being a day off. We still have to love. We still have to protect. We still have to provide. We still have to know. We still have to be present as fathers. If we're gonna lead our families well, there are no days off. But glory to God that he gives us that great persistent example that our great shepherd never takes a day off. He never rests and he never stops loving you, providing for you, being present for you, protecting you. He is there 24-7, 365. That is an amazing promise of God. There's only one greater promise than his presence every day, all day, no days off. And it's found in this last phrase. And it is the exclamation point to this tremendous psalm. And it says right here, and I, why? It goes back to the verse one, that my shepherd, I, there's a personal relationship. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God gives us the great promise. 
that not only will he never take a day off here, he will never leave us nor forsake us in the storms or the mountaintops. That we have the promise that if you surrendered your life to God, you've said, God, I need a shepherd. If I'm by myself, I am a sheep that is strained and I'm gonna be definitely falling to the predators. I won't last outside of your protection and your provision. I need a shepherd. And you have that relationship with God through Jesus Christ. He gives us the best promise that this isn't our home, that this is simply temporary pasture land, that he's directing us and leading us to an eternal home with him forever. There is a promise that this is simply temporary housing. And we can live our lives for him and make a difference and an impact so that when we leave this world, we leave it better than we found it. That our legacy, when we die and go to heaven forever, that we leave people stronger in Christ than if we weren't here. It's an amazing promise that he says, you know what, when you're done following this shepherd, you get to go celebrate life eternal if you know the shepherd personally. Jesus says very clearly in John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. No one enters into the fold of the good shepherd except through a relationship with Jesus. That is how we receive this promise that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's how we experience eternal life with God through a relationship with God by accepting and surrendering to Jesus Christ.